recorded. But uh, it's wonderful to see you all. Um, after after we hear from uh, Christina and Martin, the researchers, we are going to um, to just have you know um, some uh, questions and answers for them specifically. And and following that, after they leave us, if you still have some things that uh, you want to talk with us about or you want to talk to each other about, we can do that as well. So that's the format for today. Um, so uh, let me just introduce Martin Ehoy and Christina Björk Petersen from the University of South Denmark. And I made a mistake and I'm so sorry in the invitation I wrote the the, the totally different university. So we will note that down, that that was a mistake. It is the University of South Denmark. And uh, they are making a study right now that I find really, really fascinating, uh, where they um, uh, compare cycling with age, that's cycling without age, and another association's activities, and they are called Team Twilling. Uh, their uh, research is their, their paper is called uh, in Danish it's called no bevægelse bevæger, which is a very catchy phrase, and it translates I would say into English in when uh, movement moves or something like that. But let me not uh, uh, talk too much about uh, you guys' research. I think you're the best to do that. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, and hear from Martin and Christina um, what what you found out. Thank you very much, Penilla. But um, first of all, uh, you wrote Roskilde University, and it's not actually. I live uh, just close to Roskilde, so I just just in the backyard of Roskilde University. So it's not that wrong. <laughs> but we are associated with the University of Southern Denmark. So um, Martin and I are from the National Institute of Public Health, um, which is an um, institute that has a, that does a lot of intervention research uh, we also do a lot of the research connected to uh, the real world and um, uh, so that's what we are concerned with that public health issues and research that um, that that takes place in the in the real world setting uh, so th that's our focus and that's why this fits very much into our focus and our research at the Institute. So uh, before we have prepared some slides, uh, but I think Martin, maybe we should, uh, yeah, maybe we should put on the slides, but um, also introduce ourselves a little bit. Um, I can start off. Um, I'm an associate professor at the Inst Institute and uh, I have a background in, um, I did a master thesis in public health science and did a PhD on physical activity epidemiology. So my background is very much, relate, much related to what, how, uh, how physical activity can prevent diseases and promote health. Um, but as you know, cycling without age is a lot more than physical activity. And I think um, as I have continued researching, I've developed my area into all the other things that so it's not only physical activity it's also the context uh, and I've been um, a, a project leader at the Danish Outdoor Council so my interest is also on the nature and being outdoor and I think you can probably much uh, all of you you probably know what it um, how, how it how it can uh, help people take them outdoors and, and how uh, the experience and me mental health and the social context and all that also affects. So not only the physical uh, issues, but a lot of other aspects. So that was a little bit about myself. Um, I'm also a research group leader for the, the uh, at the department. Um, uh, where we have a group called, uh, working on public health in Denmark. Uh, so that's my research area. Uh, Martin, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, I will. Thank you. So my name is Martin and I'm a research assistant at the uh, Institute. I have a background as a physical therapist as well as a master of health. And I finished my thesis, which related to cycling without age during 
the summer of 2021. And that's what I will be presenting today. That was uh, the very brief introduction from me. Excellent. Um, uh, yes, I'll just, uh, you need to um, make me co-host if I can, so I can share. So okay, slide. It's it should be open to sharing. Mm, it's nope. not? No. Okay, all right, let me just do it. There you go. Um, yes, perfect. Thank better you. now? Okay. Yes. Um, just let me check. Um, uh, this is the, the right presentation. Um, can you see? Can you see our presentation now? Yes. Yes. I see it. Good. So. Um, I'll I'll just uh, skip the first slide here, but our our talk today will be on the uh, when movement moves project. Uh, as Pandela said, we have a this is our research project, um, and it is uh, a project where we evaluate the effect of cycling without age in Denmark um, and uh, team. Twilling, also called, I think it's called a uh, team twin in English. I'm not sure, but I think that's the translation into English. So, oh, this is not moving. Um, the, so the first uh, part, I will be talking about the background uh, of the project and why we initiated the study. So why is this actually important? And what are we examining and how are we doing? Because I think what I think you probably all know why it is important, but but what are we actually doing? How do we actually go about this research? And uh, what are we examining at the pilots and the passengers at the captain level? And so we'll go into detail about that. Uh, and Martin will um, present some results for you. We don't have. Um, I should probably mention we're still collecting data, so we don't we can't show you the final results because they're still ticking in um, collecting uh, all the data. So we'll show you just preliminary results. Um, so it's still in the progress. So the main aim of this project is to um, examining what does it mean physiologically, mentally, and socially for people who cannot move themselves to be moved by others? Um, and the need for, uh, the, the reason for this focus is because, as I, as I just uh, said uh, briefly in the introduction, we think there's something else than just the physiological or physical activity. There's also the mental and the social aspect, which is uh, what is it related to quality of life. We have the, the physiological and mental and social aspects that all uh, are inf all influence how we actually consider our quality of life. So this is why we, we want to measure different compartments of quality of life. And we have taken these two initiatives that are already existing because they have a common goal of creating quality of life. They both relate on social relations, joy for people, uh, and most importantly, it is people that are moved through others. That is why we have the name When Movement Moves. Um, yeah, I think I'll just uh, move on. So why is this uh, actually important and what do we know? Um, physical activity, we know that this, there's a reduction in the risk of several diseases such as chronic heart disease, uh, diabetes, several types of cancers. Uh, but we also know that there's an effect on general health and well-being. So it both prevents uh, diseases and it promotes health. Further but more, we know that among the elderly, there's evidence that physical activity can prevent falls and fractures, 
by improving muscle mass and bone health and balance. And that's why we need to also increase physical activity and actually through our aging, even though people are a high age and maybe be disabled, we still need to have some physical activity because it makes them help um, to have some function and functionalities throughout life. Also, physical activity uh, and social activity, I should say that the social activity is very much important here, promotes health and well being, and this is related to quality of life. We know that people with a disability and elderly, uh, elderly that are um, that have age related movement impairments, they have uh, they experience experience uh, difficulties in participating in physical activity. And this is why it's even more important that we have activities that are uh, adapted to these people. In Denmark, as in a lot of other countries, many people do not have the opportunities to move on their own. And this relates both to the elderly, but also to the disabled people. And in, in the light of what I've just said previously, this causes that we have some, a lot of people who are excluded from everyday activities and also causes some challenges for regarding mental and mental health and social health. So we think that it's important to look at the consequences of this um, physical inactivity or social inactivity in relation to the elders and how can we actually improve initiatives that can prevent uh, that, that these ex people are excluded from the activities and thereby improve quality of life among these people. Oh. Uh, just need to change the right screen here, this one. So we have um, four research questions. The first one is, what does it mean for the participants' quality of life to be moved through others? And for this uh, research question, we have the passengers at the t as the target group. The second um, research question is, what happens physiologically among the participants um, as they move through others. This is also related to the, to the passengers. The third question is, what does it mean for the volunteers' quality of life and health to move others? And for this um, specific question, we have the pilots and the captains in focus. And for the fourth one is, um, what does it mean for the care staff that the elderly are involved in activities where they are moved through others. So all these four questions combined will feed into our main goal of showing the importance of movement through others. So we have um, several tackers groups, as you can see. So we have a lot of data collection um, getting around both the passengers and the pilots and captains and the staff at the nursing homes. The uh, project uh, is supported uh, from the uh, Danish Health Foundation and the Bevika Foundation and was initiated in 2019. And uh, as you can see, uh, we are still collecting data and doing our field work. So um, Martin and others are still out interviewing and collecting and measuring. Um, so you will get some just some results for that, but we'll look forward to present the final results in uh, two, uh, 2023. Uh, we expect to have the results. So how do we do it and where are we actually uh, conducting this research? Uh, we are uh, going out to the nursing homes um, 
Uh, so uh, as I started off saying, we, we are very fond of research in practice. So this is a research practice in practice where we depend on the nursing homes. Um, so we go out to the municipalities and you can see this in map. This is where we have our data collection going on. Um, we do both uh, process and effect evaluation, which means that we uh, evaluate both on the effect on what is actually um, the outcome, but we also evaluate what is going on, what are the mechanisms which are also extremely important because I think Martin might be maybe touching that, but could, we need we want to understand what's actually going on, what are the secret or team twin that helped contribute this um, outcome, this main outcome of a quality of life. So this is why it's extremely important to, to, to combine the qualitative and the quantitative methods uh, so we get the deeper into this understanding. So we have a pre and post measurement. Um, we started off in April uh, 21 uh, and we finished um, hopefully within a month, um, well, depending on the COVID and the pandemic, uh, we hope to get the final data um, collected. Yes, so what we're doing, as I said, with well, our main um, outcome is quality of life. We have some questionnaires uh, that are uh, measuring different uh, questions related to quality of life, but also other aspects uh, of importance. And then we have some physical tests. Um, and these are, um, these have been very interesting, uh, actually just conducting these tests because it's an extremely um, difficult uh, target group to get to do a, a walking test and do hand grip strength and just a simple cognitive test. Um, so we get some interesting results just doing that. Uh, and then we do with our uh, interviews. So we have um, 49 passengers uh, where we have information on baseline. So before they go out, uh, this, is, this is measured before they go on their cycling trips. And after we have this measurement, they participate participate in a minimum of, of um, six to eight bike rides. Uh, that is our aim. I'm not sure we actually control what's going on, but but that is what they've been instructed to do uh, for three months. And then we follow up after this. They participate in two uh, tests um, at the care center. Uh, so this is also before and after uh, the cycling period. Uh, and then they have the, the functional test, as I mentioned, the cognition, uh, test cognition, uh, balance, gait test, hand strength, weight and height. Besides the uh, passengers, we are, as I said, also collecting data on pilots and we are still collecting this data. So I can't give you a final number of participants. Um, uh, we hope to close the um, collection yeah, in February, um, hopefully. But um, the answering of the, of the questionnaire and we, they're also registering some uh, key indicators on the trip. So what, are, what were the weather like? Uh, what was the passenger's mood? What were, their own mood uh, on the trip um, so, and just a general uh, question on health and well-being. So that was just a quick introduction to how we actually are measuring uh, these um, different uh, well, key indicators. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll bring you some, 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 some final results soon. Uh, well, you have to wait for that. Uh, so I say, so um, I hope you stay tuned. I just wrote uh, the uh, website here uh, where we, uh, this is for Cycling Without Age in Denmark, but we also have our own website where we will put in the results um, so you can follow that if you're interested. But we have some publications already. 
uh, Martin's master thesis. He will uh, talk about that. Also have um, a study design paper uh, that was published uh, in was it November? I think it was. Yeah. I think it might be September. September. Oh, September. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, several theses coming up uh, where we have one that is looking on um, examining how uh, cycling without age is uh, is working in, um, in a context, how it can change this context, how, what it will influence. Uh, uh, so looking more at the organizational structure and also how can we upscale these events to other what is actually um, promoting up uh, inhibiting factors uh, for um, upscaling cycling without age and then we have a master thesis looking at loneliness uh, so that's coming up which is uh, an outspring of what our interviews where we've seen that this is a very important issue for many passengers. This is loneliness, but we are very curious on, are they actually lonely before? What is loneliness for the passengers? How does cycling without age um, um, uh, helps if, fight this loneliness, feeling of loneliness. Um, so what's actually going on there? That's just started up. Um, so hopefully we'll prevent, uh, present results for that soon as well. But I think I'll give the word to Martin and please, um, if you have any questions, just write in the chat or just speak up. Absolutely. Uh, I welcome uh, everybody. Either you might want to ask your questions right now, or you can wait till Martin has introduced um, his uh, findings. I just want to ask you, uh, Christina, when it says like all of these um, publications, are they actually in English? Because it's it looks like... Uh... Um, yes. Uh, the, the paper on the study design paper, uh, which is describing more in detail, how are we um, measuring this? What are, what are the design for that? That's in English and that's a research paper. That's a peer reviewed research paper, that, which is in English. Um, Martin's thesis is uh, also in English. Um, yep. So you can, you can have that if you are interested. Um, I'm not sure of the others uh, thesis will be in English, but we'll have several, we have several papers lined up and th they will be in English because that's our scientific research uh, language. Mm -hmm. So we will publish in English. That's really helpful to, to our global community. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So Martin, if, uh, if, you, if you want to share your findings, that would be wonderful. And I don't know if, if it's going to be part of your slides, but um, do, are you going to introduce what Team Twin is as well? Um, no, I'm not, but okay. we could take five minutes afterwards to, uh, to go yes. a bit over it. If oh, you right. Want to. All right, let's, let's do that afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you mind controlling the slides still, Christina? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just uh, pop on to the next one. All right, so um, yeah, as I said earlier, I finished my master thesis in the summer of 2021, and it was titled A Shared Journey Towards Mental Health, Nursing Home Residents, Participation in Cycling Without Age. Um, and that's what I will be going through now, briefly. Um, the aim and study design of my thesis, um, can you click once more? Thank you. So the aim is to investigate the influence of cycling without age on the perceived mental health of nursing home residents. And to investigate this, I conducted a qualitative approach and interviewed five nursing home residents and observed four cycling without age trips where I went along on my own bike. And the next one. I came at it with two different theoretical frameworks. Um, the first was the basic psychological needs theory, which is a theory by Ryan and DC, um, and consists of, if you click once more, autonomy, competence, and relatedness as three factors an individual must fulfill um, to be able to be mentally healthy. And then Adam's um, conceptual critique of time and health, 
where she outlines two, um, two different types of time. The natural time, which is the time that um, human beings earlier was controlled by the change of the seasons, daylight, um, daytime and nighttime, so on and so forth. And then mechanical time, which is the clock time that we have invented ourselves and which is now actually controlling a lot of our lives. We get up at 4 a.m. to watch some speak online, um, despite that probably not being the best for our health. But we can do that now that we can measure time down to the smallest second. And um, it makes us take some uh, make some decisions that might not be the best for our health. It might stress us out eventually. And Adam says that the more stressed out you become, you um, the more out of balance you become in your mental health as well. And if you want to regain that mental health or get out of this, she, she coins it, hurry sickness, actually, you need to participate in time slowing activities, something that takes the pace all the way down and which have elements of the past, the present and the future to help you realign in where you are located in time. If you think about people with dementia, they often lose their sense of um, of time. And therefore, she suggests that, well, not as a cure to dementia, but to help combat some of the um, ill effects of dementia, you can participate in, for instance, time slowing activities or um, meditation or something like that, where the pace is low and you focus on various aspects. Okay, that was the theoretical part. Let's get into the more interesting now. If you can get the next one. Yep, my findings here. So the primary finding I've had is that pilots are key elements for the experiences of the residents. Without the pilots, the, um, the initiative would be much less than it is. Um, because what the pilots are actually able to do is to direct the attention of the passenger they might say, oh, look at the deer out on the field or feel the wind in your face, listen to the birds. Um, the pilot might actually take on a rather, um, hmm, yeah, how do you say that? Um, like, like a mindfulness instructor role, sort of guiding the attention of the passenger to various aspects. Um, furthermore, the pilots are able to introduce various time-related elements to the passengers. First of all, one of the key principles of cycling without age, as I understand it anyway, is that the pace must be low. That's a key element of it. And this low element leaves room for autonomy. If you're not going 30 kilometers an hour on the bike, the passengers actually have a chance to say, oh, can't we go over here? Or can't we check this out? Because it's not just flying past them. They, are, they have the time to take in what they're seeing and make decisions and try to get in charge of things. And in the various cases I've seen, they were allowed to, they were given autonomy to decide where does this trip go? Um, furthermore, uh, no, not yet, Christina, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, furthermore, the pilots are incredibly important um, for the destinations chosen and choosing a meaning, meaningful destination for the passenger was, well, it was mind boggling to see what it could do actually. Um, during one of the observations I did, we were driving around town and suddenly we came up on a street that was lined by yellow houses. We were two tri shows out, uh, one passenger in each and me and my own bike and then two pilots. And the two passengers started chit chatting. Oh, do you remember that yellow house over there? That's where uh, the school was. And the yellow house on the other side, That's uh, that was a pharmacy. And then, oh, what was the third one? And so on and so forth. They, they went back and forth recalling what was where. And, and suddenly one of them said, hey, that house, wasn't that Dr. Drock's house? And the other laughed, suddenly recalling a story that she'd actually forgotten. And, and I was curious. I had to ask Dr. Drock, uh, what's this? Um, and together, the two of them actually um, recalled the story about Dr. Drug and told me, well, no matter 
what you went to see the doctor for, one thing was certain, you'd always come away with drugs. Headache, stomach ache, stumped your little toe, drugs. That was a solution to everything back then. And the two old ladies there had a good laugh about it. They recalled their past all of a sudden. In the image you see here on the screen, we actually created a moment in the present. We were driving around a small town and came up on a church. And the pilot asked, hey, so do you want to go see the church? And the passenger said, yeah, sure, let's do that. And I thought, okay, that's going to be nice. Let me park my bike. And I did. But the pilots didn't park their bikes. The passengers didn't get out. Um, a worker at the church came and opened the door. And then both trishaws went inside. And the bikes went all the way up to the altar before they stopped. And there we had a chat about religion and various events they'd been to in the church because they, they knew this church from, from their past. And when we got back to the nursing home and I interviewed these two ladies, they were blown away by the fact that they'd been inside a church on a trishaw bike. And they were told that they could always come back on a Sunday if they wanted to participate in, in a communion or something like that. And this was a story that we're going to be telling for a long while, it seemed. Um, and lastly, we had some experiences in the future. We drove to a construction site and just parked the bike there. Everyone stayed on the bike, but we just looked at the construction going on. And I asked, well, why are we doing this? These two ladies don't seem particularly interested in construction work. No, said the pilot, they're not. But they know what this um, building on a construction has been before. It used to be a hospital. Some of them, uh, one of them birthed their child in there and another's husband died in there, but now it's being um, repurposed. It's being turned into um, apartment buildings and it's gonna bring new life to the city. So the visit to the construction site actually showed these two women that, okay, life goes on. There's something in the future, things are evolving. Despite my life maybe slowing down or coming to a stop now that I've come into a nursing home, things are still happening outside. And they felt joy being part of that and seeing that things were still going. And now the last one. <laughs> yeah, and the final thing that the pilots provide and help um, direct the passenger's attention to is the sensory stimuli they actually achieve while they're out on the rides. The pilots mentioned, can you feel the wind in your faces? They hit bumps in the road, which stimulate the, tactile, uh, the sense of tactile. Um, they point out, out various aromas um, from cooking or manure. Well, I suppose it was mostly cooking was out, when I was out. It was winter. So um, they point out landscapes and bird song. And they do stops at various places to stimulate the sense of taste cheese, beer, coffee, ice cream. I've heard a lot of different things that they stop for. Um, all of these things are something that the residents might not get on a day-to-day -day basis at the nursing home. You don't have changing landscapes. You don't have wind in, your, uh, wind in your face. You don't really get any bumps while you're there. Um, so it gives some variation from the otherwise day-to-day what, uh, how do you say that? Um, Non-sensory days they have at the nursing homes, I suppose. Um, yeah, next one. Okay, so what does all, the, all, uh, all this mean? Well, I've looked at several studies and tried to compare my findings to them to, to see if I could find some sort of resemblance between the things and what I found was that this focus on the past and all these happy memories that it um, recalled for the um, passengers resemble reminiscence therapy a lot, which is a therapy, um, a type of therapy you can use to improve mental health very um, effectively in demented residents. Um, and uh, putting it simply, you think back on happy memories, you maybe you use pictures or you use music to help the residents recall these happy um, events in their life and it improves them in the here and now. But what these um, studies also find 
is that continuous participation is necessary if you want to maintain the positive effects of reminiscence therapy. And that's where cycling without age becomes very, very relevant because it's not, it, uh, it's not just an eight week intervention. No, it's something ongoing that as long as there are pilots out there who want to actually drive the bikes, well, it's a possibility for the residents to go out and have this reminiscence. Next one. Yeah. As I talked about in the beginning, um, my theoretical uh, framework consisted of Adam, who talked about um, hurry sickness and being unaligned in time. And this, uh, these visits to the past, present and future could help the residents be realigned or recalibrated in time and therefore help to improve mental health. Next one. And lastly, the um, basic psychological needs theory, the basic psychological needs for mental health were all supported during the rights. Um, every time a ride was going to occur, pilots asked the passengers, do you want to come? Even if uh, nursing home staff had said, yeah, um, uh, Linda is going today, the pilot still asked. And if Linda said, no, I don't want to go today, she was allowed not to go, of course. Um, one would hope that the pilot would say, and they did in this case anyway. Um, but it was uh, that choice was respected, no matter what it was. Secondly, competences were supported by the pilots. Um, the trips, uh, sorry, the destinations visited allowed the residents, uh, the passengers, to take part in conversation and gave them narratives to share when they got back home. For instance, the story about uh, cycling into the church. And, so, uh, and lastly, um, it created a sense of relatedness between the passengers and the pilots that they had these experiences together. Okay. And finally, the implications. Well, if you can do one more click. For cycling without age, um, it's importantly relevant to focus on pilots and realize that they are key elements for the resident's experience. That's what I found anyway. And therefore pilots should be encouraged to talk to residents about their former homes, um, the place of residence, their interests, both current as well as former. And based on these small conversations during rides, choose destinations that interest the, uh, the passenger that have some sort of relation to them as that will boost the gain from, from the rights. And for, polit for policymakers, I suggest that, first of all, well, cycling without age seems to be able to positively impact the mental health of nursing home residents. But in order to do that, an activity must create communities. It must focus on memories and reminiscing, and it must allow the resident to leave the home and finally, as I showed before, with the, uh, with the reminiscing, it must take place continuously. Yeah. And that's just references if you want to look into what, uh, where I've got all of the things from. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of things in the chat, but I'm not sure if they're related to this. But otherwise, feel free to ask questions now um, to both Christina and I. I can't see the chat while I'm sharing screen, so I might just. Oh, stop, okay. Stop. I'm gonna look I'll, through I'll, it. I'll probably <laughs> just stop sharing. Um, if you if you don't mind, then I can see all the faces and also the chat. Good idea. Yes. Thank you so very much. You know, I I was introduced to your um to your work about a year ago, and uh, and I think it's absolutely amazing. And I believe that for all of us on this call, we've of course experienced the magic that happens on, on these rides and we have been asked about the effects of it. And what I really think is amazing is that you have, you found, you know, some really, um, like you've pointed down, pointed to exactly what it is that happens on these rides. And like we've always said, it isn't actually about the tri show itself. You know, you're not talking about the type of bike or uh, or how you get it in and out of uh, and the mechanical side of it. It is what exactly what you said. 
the pilot plays a role and reminiscing plays a role. And, and I totally agree. Did Martin, did both you and also to you, Christina, did you get a chance to actually be a pilot on these rides or even be a passenger? Have you tried that yet? I've not had the chance to be a pilot myself, but I have been a passenger and uh, that was quite something. Yes. Um, well, I say that I haven't been a pilot. That's not entirely true. I have a trishaw bike for the kids. Um, and we often go on trips, the whole family. My wife is in, in it with the kids and then I pilot it around. And uh, while I was doing my thesis, I noticed a lot of similarities between what the kids were interested in and what I heard the nursing home residents were interested in. It was interesting to see animals. It was nice to get outside. The mood improved. And yeah, we started doing it a lot um, during our first lockdown in 2020 and spent a lot of time inside as a family to begin with. But after we started going out, we felt things improve. Yeah, I, I, I can recognize the feeling of, uh, of joy, no matter age, on, on these week shows. What about you, Christina? Yeah. I I haven't had a chance yet. Uh, I think it's mainly a time issue because I would really love it. And I think being a, um, as you just saw, being a mother to three uh, boys uh, that are at home at the moment, one of them is infected and time is just an issue uh, right now. But I doing this study really is an eye opener. And um, I must say, it's just wonderful hearing all, all the stories. Um, and as you said, Penilla, the magic. Um, and, and it sort of just um, fascinates you what's, what, what is actually going on. I think, especially when, when I was very jealous of Martin, uh, he was actually had the chance of going out doing the interviews. Uh, and, and I think Martin, what you did, did not mention was that you actually conducted these interviews in the middle of the most extremely lockdown period we had in Denmark. Everything was locked down, but uh, the passengers were very, and also the pilots were very eager of uh, contributing to this. And that was really nice to just see um, that people really wanted to participate and be a part of documenting what is actually going on. As you say, we all see and hear stories about the magic, but we need to know how can we, how can we uh, show this? And there was a question in the chat about the, hypothesis what are we actually expecting to find and being a researcher we do have hypothesis but we also very needs to be very true to what what we actually see and um so to be honest um we we want to study the physiological mentally and social um aspect and i think because we all think it contributes, but I think what we are uh, most insecure about is actually the physiological changes. Can we can we see these? But we need to we we need to measure that in order to understand what's actually going on. And we have put a lot of effort into how do we measure these uh, physiological changes, and that's why we ended up doing a lot of um, physical tests, but we also have questions on the self-reported uh, uh, physical uh, shape or so, so, so we get their own perception of it, because one thing is what we can actually measure, the other thing is do you perceive yourself in a better health, which is just as important uh, as what we can actually measure objectively. So, so we're trying to sort of just put the puzzle together and understand what's actually going on. And it might be what, well, well our main hypothesis, hypothesis is, it's an interplay between all these different aspects. Um, so it all contributes to the, um, to, to the benefit uh, and the outcome of a quality of life. Uh, because we are, we, our hypothesis is that it, it does have an effect on quality of life. What we need to go deeper into is the mechanism of why are we actually seeing this? Um, so that's also why we're doing this triangulation about with uh, different target groups and different kind of measurement methods and, and stuff like that. 
I think that would be absolutely amazing to to if if that is uh, part of your conclusions to see the physiological side side of it, because one of the stories that has always really really inspired me and and blown my mind away is when the, uh, especially during those long rides uh, that you've probably heard of where they go multiple trashos together how people actually, because they were away for several days and it was a very intense experience, they actually sometimes forgot their walking frames. When, when um, walking, yeah, th those uh, help, uh, helping mechanisms, when they got out of the, the trash or to, to go into a cafe um, or to just move around during that ride. And, and that's almost like a miracle. And we know that it's probably not a miracle. It there is a, a physiological or mental explanation. So that is that is super fascinating. Um, we have a question from Eunice. Oh hi. A comment. Um, yeah. Um, so um, literally just to build on the on the question. So um, the reason why I asked um, for uh, because is because um, so I'm currently writing a uh, business case um, to my to my directors um, in order for them to fund the tri show. And, and I feel that those four um, research questions um, would be really, um, would actually add value to the um, report that I'm obviously writing. So that's why I was actually wondering if you've got, you know, um, like if you have a, um, basically if you have answers to the research questions, which I can actually include into yeah. the uh, report. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> We, we only have the results that we have shown to you now, so you have to have to hold on a, a <laughs> little, little more to get where we hope we hope to get the result. But research, as you probably all know, does take time um, and we're still collecting our data, so we cannot um, show you the results yet. Uh, but um, but but uh, yeah, it will be very interesting to see uh, and yeah. we will we, we will publish as soon as we get them thank you in due time actually um, maybe i could uh, just throw in a question uh maybe you can do it. yeah so uh, maybe just throw in a, a just a little explanation about team twin i just shared a link to team twin in english uh just for all of you so you know what it is um and i met steen and uh, and peter uh about uh, four years ago when um, they were interested in uh, learning about some of uh, the results that we saw from Cycling Without Age. And they also uh, explained that, um, like Steen being one of the, the twins that was doing, he was doing marathons and uh, he was doing triathlons and so on. And he wanted to share that with his brother. And he felt he hadn't spent my, much time with his brother over the, over the past number of years, but he wanted to bring him along so he started actually uh, running marathons with him in one of those special carts that you could you see on that link as well. Um, and, and initially his brother Peter got uh, really, really tired every time they were out. Uh, but as they, he got more come used to it, uh, he actually got in better shape. And he was puzzled about the fact that, uh, despite the fact that his brother wasn't actually physically doing anything, he was a passenger. He was, uh, he was actually getting in better shape and he was able to compete uh, marathons as a passenger. And, and I remember having conversations with Steen about this, saying that, uh, that we felt the same thing as well. So uh, elders coming back would uh, be in a completely different uh, both state of mind and we felt that uh, they were actually getting better physically as well. And we had no idea why that was. And that's one of the things that, uh, that we hope that we'll be able to get some results from the study as well. And I guess also that's one of your, some of your hypotheses is that people move through others. So other people move. Um, I remember when I, when I started cycling that age some years ago, um, people said, but you know, you, they're just passive passengers. Uh, how can that be good for them? Um, but I think uh, we, we've heard over and over and, and particularly today, we've seen so many wonderful arguments uh, why that makes a huge difference to people. And, and just in line with that, Ole, uh, and thank you for sharing and, and um, your knowledge about Team Twin. Uh, uh, I'll be happy to uh, elaborate on Team Twin as well, uh, but just a quick uh, note on that. What we heard for some passengers is that when, as they're sitting in the, um, 
in the cycle, I think Martin, you might confirm that, but they, they actually um, um, using their uh, core uh, muscles uh, to to keep themselves stable in the cycle. So, but but we are struggling on how to we haven't found a way of if how we should measure that. So we have come about it using other uh, physiological measurements. So that's why it well if we end up not showing it, it doesn't mean that there isn't any results. So just underline the fact that it's just will just be a fact that we can't measure what's actually going on if we don't if we don't show anything. Because what and that's why it's so important that we support our objective measures with the in interviews and also the observation, because what we actually, Martin, what you observed was that they're holding their head and they're they're sitting up and they they have a, a different posture when they're sitting in the cycle compared to when they're sitting at the um, uh, at the nursing home. So something is happening. Just a question: How do we how do we actually um, measure these and how can we illustrate what's going on? Um, so and and then and a quick note on uh, team twin we do a slightly different study on that uh, subgroup uh, we have added some clinical tests on the um, on the team twin so um, hopefully you will see the results where we have uh, some what do you call that? Um, we have some glycose measurement so we have some on uh, our blood we take blood samples before and after. Uh, we also, where we can see all sorts of different um, things also for uh, brain growth and uh, yeah, uh, different different blood things. Um, yeah, this lies in an, at another department than ours. It's, yeah. uh, it's a team up. <laughs> uh, but we'll, and then we also look in the, at the, um, uh, body mass and the muscle mass um yeah to to see that we do a dexa scanning um for those participants as well yeah as well as looking i have to... another uh, question for you as well christina the other day we we touched a little bit upon um some of the hormonal effects um and of course we know that it is very difficult to measure but uh um can you sh just elaborate a little bit on that um, yeah, I was I was expecting your uh, question, Ole. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, yes. Um, well, we it's not it's not a question that we actually uh, included in this study, but it would be very relevant. We did another study where we looked into well, that was a literature review where we looked into the mechanisms of how physical activity is expected to. Um, influence mental health and what we did find find was that it um, there's a lot of hormonal um, hormones uh, that are in, um, that are responsible for the positive effect on mental health as well as there's also some psychological issues so what we're actually seeing is that it's it is a neurobiological mechanism going on where you can actually see changes in the brain structure, both uh, structure and functionality of the brain. Uh, some very, very interesting uh, stuff, uh, but there's not a lot of research. Our main conclusion um, was that um, we still need a lot of, of research and studies on this. Um, so uh, in order to understand this better, um, I think the media uh, put a headline that was, uh, now we understand everything which is not true. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a catchy title. Yes. <laughs> and then so the media always want the catchy title. So um, yeah, it's it's not as clear as it was uh, set out in the media. Uh, but it sounds like cycling without age has definitely helped you guys to have work ahead of you for many years to come. Definitely. Um, definitely, yeah. I see um, Clara is asking a question oh, in the cool. chat about um, studies on young people with intellectual disabilities. Um, and um, the team twin study is on a lot, uh, on a way younger population than the Cycling Without Age study. It's people with cerebral palsy primarily, um, but the study concerns itself with. Uh, I think we have 20 participants, is that correct? Yeah. Um, who's gone through 
all of the various tests Christina mentioned before, and which will be uh, which we will be sharing results on in twenty twenty three as well. Yeah, they're actually quite young. We we um we actually had to to make a low code point saying that it had to be uh, eighteen years or older in order to participate, uh, but. A lot of uh, participants in Tin Twin are uh, children and young people, so um, we have results from that group as well. Okay, so we're nearing almost an hour, and uh, unless there are some questions uh, right now, you know, a lot of people saying thank you, and and I very much agree. This is very helpful, and I think that we have all tried, especially when we're looking for funding and support when people ask for results so something like this is heaven sent to all of those people um, building their chapters of cycling without age so thank you so much for joining us and we will definitely keep you know checking in with you and as soon as there are any results we're going to share them with our whole community so um so thank you very very much it's it's very appreciated very much um there is maybe a last question in the chat Yes, uh, the presentation as well. Would you uh, can you send it to us? We have a platform where we will share all uh, all of the preliminary findings and your your slides. Of course. Um, that's wonderful. So yep. thank you all very much, uh, especially to uh, Christina and Martin for joining us. And we will invite you back again. Um, and uh, and thanks to all of you guys from Cycling Without Edge. Especially a big thank you to Ellen that you got up, you know, at the, in the middle of the night. And I promise you next time we will schedule this, this shared meeting at a time that is maybe a little bit more suitable to your natural clock. <laughs> it's not a problem, I assure you. I've been cycling at 4.30 in the morning before, so not a problem. Wow, absolutely. <laughs> we have the best people. We have the best uh, amazing affiliates in cycling without age. 